By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against a player from Los Angeles. His name is Clanet, and he has brought an Alters deck to the table. I've called it Alters Bonanza. It's truly special. It's very beautiful. In a moment, I'm going to show you the deck picture. And I am playing uh, against this deck with a new brew. I've made an Evil Eye of Orms deck. It's one of my... Well, I have so many favorite cards, but it's definitely a card that I've always wanted to make a brew with, and I finally got a full playset. So I've, I've put this deck together. I'm really uh, curious to see how it will perform today against Clanet. Um, if you want to go straight to the games, like always, you can check the timestamp below. Click on the timestamp, and that will take you straight to game number one. Here we are going to continue with the deck text, and I'm going to start with the deck of Clanet. And this is the deck of my opponent. So this is the deck that I've dubbed Alters Bonanza. Now uh, let's look at the contents of the actual deck. Well, but just first, I mean, stunning Alters. Uh, let's have a look. We see that we have a lot of colors in this deck. Maybe all the colors. When we look at the dual lands, I see blue, I see white, I see green, red. I don't see black, but he is playing with Birds of Paradise. So he can use Birds of Paradise to make every type of mana. He's playing with all the Moxen. It's fully powered, it seems. Yes, it is. And we only see one black card, by the way, which is the Demonic Tutor. I see some really cool He-Man altars of Sylvan Library. And look at those spirit links there at the bottom. They're really cool. They're obviously all um, altered to people that have passed. I see Biggie Smalls. I see Tupac. I see Michael Jackson. I see Bruce Lee. I think the last one is my personal favorite. And then look at those City of Brass altars. That's definitely a reference to Star Wars, all four of them, different scenes from the Star Wars movies. And we also have some Juzam Jin altars there. If we see the Brain Geyser, the Soul Ring, uh, the Mana Drain. And oh, there's another black card. Oh, he's also playing with Mind Twist. Oh, man. Um, overall, this looks like a pretty strong deck that I'm up against. So uh, I'm curious if my evil eye can stand a chance. But first, just... Let's look at this. Let's enjoy the altars. Um, he also sent me a few uh, clo up close pictures, so they're probably showing on the screen right now, and they're they're pretty cool. Really, really nice altars. He told me that he usually goes to magic fests and other gatherings um, to try to get the artists to do altars for him, and the um, some of the altars he contacted the agent. Some some artists are easier to reach than others. And, um, and some of these uh, pieces took him a year or longer to wait for. So he sent it to the artist and then it, it took over a year before he got them back. So that's quite a story. And I'm sure there are still a few cards in this deck that are not altered. So I'm sure that um, he wants to get them altered. Um, by the way, if you like altered cards, you can also follow him on Instagram. I think the Instagram address is showing on the screen as well. It's um, alpha underscore lotus. And you can find him on Instagram. So this is the deck of my opponent today of Clanet. Let's go to my brew and uh, and see what I'm going to play with today. And this is the deck that I am playing with today. And it's all about Evil Eye of Orms by Gore. So I've got four of these. And as you can see, it's a black and a green deck. And um, I have... A few tactics in this deck. So the first thing you, or the second thing you maybe notice after the evil eyes, or the fact that there's a lot of land destruction in this deck. So basically, what I want to do early game is get my elves of deep shadow out, or you know maybe get a ritual out or whatever, and just attack the the mana base of my opponent as fast as possible using the sinkholes and using the ice storms and also using the crumbles because with crumbles I can attack the artifact mana rocks. So I'm really gonna attack the mana base and crumble by the way is fantastic to play on a Mishra's factory. It's very, very satisfying when you can uh, pull that one off. And then I have Sylvan Libraries. Th those are in this deck to really give me even more advantage. So I have advantage in the mana uh, section of the game. Sylvan Library is hopefully gonna give me advantage um, in the card section of the game, and then I'm going to play out Hypnotic Spectres. Now, Hypnotic Spectres can work both ways. One theory is because I've removed the lands of my opponent, he cannot play out anything, and my Hypnotic Spectre is free to swing in and discard some cards. Another side of the coin is, and that's actually why I put them in there, 
they're a um, they they're meant to catch the removal for my evil eyes because I'm probably going to play my hypnotic specters before I play my evil eyes. So when my hypnotic specter hits the board, it's a threat that my opponent will have to deal with. So for example, a swords to plowsiers will probably go directly to a hypnotic specter without my opponent even thinking twice about it. And that means that I have my evil eye coming in after that play and I can start swinging with my evil eye. Now that I have this deck, one of the cards that I'm really thinking about adding is a card called Transmutation. And Transmutation uh, is a card from Legends. It's one black and one and it's an instant and it reads until end of turn target creatures power and toughness are switched. Effects that alter power, alter toughness instead and vice versa. So Transmutation could be really good in here and, and one of the cards that for me is on the list of getting replaced are those two terrors there in the left bottom corner and maybe I can replace them with two transmutations. Uh, another option of course is adding Howl from Beyond. Now I don't have these cards yet so that's why they're not in here at the moment. So I'm really curious to see if this, I mean I guess it's a pretty simple deck you could say but I'm, I'm curious if this if this pile of cards stand a chance against uh, against the powered altar deck that, that I'm up against. Um, now again, I, I keep saying this before matches, realize that we don't know from each other what decks we're playing. So um, it's not like I'm looking at, oh, you wanna play against me? What's, what's your deck photo? And then let me make a deck that can really withstand that. I mean, that's not fun, is it? I mean, in Magic, you have a sideboard for that reason and uh, you wanna be surprised by each other's decks. So this is it, this is my deck, Evil Eyes. Uh, please let me know in the comments below what you think of this brew, what you maybe you would change. Uh, and please also let me know what cards you would take out because I know tons of cards that would work really well in this brew, but what to take out, that's always the difficult thing. Anyway, this is my deck. Let's quickly go to the games and see what's going to happen. Game number one, and here we see we're getting our hands ready. And I believe it's uh, the player on the right, Clanet, who is on the play. And I'm sitting, of course, on the left with my Timmy playmat. So it's the first time I'm testing out this uh, Evil Eye deck. And it's always interesting because you, you, you have certain things in your mind and then you start actually playing with the deck and you realize, okay, this is not working, this is working, or this could be different. Um, but yeah, so it's gonna be interesting. And there we see, uh, it looks like my opponent, Klana, just took a mulligan. So that means he's drawing a new pair of seven cards and he has to put one card on the bottom of his library following the London mulligan rule, of course. And there it goes. And it look, looks like we're ready to start now. Volcanic Island here. And a double mox, but not a surrender but free. That's kind of what you would expect. So a very, uh, very strong opening, I guess, for Clanet. On the other hand, he did start with six cards after that mulligan. That means he only has three cards left in his in his hand. Playing a force, tapping and actually playing a crumble. So going straight for his uh, sources, for his mana sources. Oh, an ancestral recall. Yeah, that is really sweet for Clanet. That means. He is completely back in the game now. And like I said in the introduction, um, okay, <laughs> yeah, we were discussing the altar. Uh, so it's actually, it's an altar made by Mark Poole. And I was just asking about him, like, did he make it on the original card or how did, how did you go and how, where did you get the altar? And he said, well, this one's actually made by Mark Poole on a different card on, uh, and I think it was gone for over a year, the Ancestral Recall. And there we see the He-Man Sylvan Library. So a very strong opening uh, by my opponent here. And I mean, this deck just seems very, very powerful. What can I do? Playing an Elves of Deep Shadow and playing a Strip Mine. So I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to play my game, which is, you know, take care of his mana base and, and, and try to get ahead there. But because of the Mox and Ancestral Recall, and now he has the Sylvan as well. I think that that strategy is not really going to work. But I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll have to see. He's going to 16 at least, taking an extra card uh, with his uh, Sylvan Library. And of course that... Uh, oh, taking a time walk. Another piece of blue power here, man. I'm really getting blown out of the water by this deck. At least in this first game. And I think that Birds of Paradise is difficult for me to deal with because I'm really focusing on the mana sources in terms of artifacts and lands. And there's the Surrender Pafrit. I actually expected that much earlier to hit the board. And I'm playing a Swamp, taking a damage here, probably playing a Sinkhole, playing a Sinkhole over his land. But I mean, this whole land destruction tactic isn't as great when you're behind. 
At least he's taking a damage from his Surrender Perfeet, but he can now swing in for, th for three. Oh, and there's a Spirit Link, the Bruce Lee Spirit Link. Very cool, means I'm going to 16, he's going to get three life, so he's going to 17. And it also means that he's not taking any damage anymore from the Surrender Perfeet. And yeah, of course, to make matters worse, he's playing a Regrowth over his Ancestral Recall. I think, I mean, sure, we're gonna we're gonna finish the game, but... I don't really stand a chance, do I? So, oh, I want to tap four mana, but I don't. Okay, what am I going to do here? Playing another Elves of Deep Shadow. And, oh, I'm actually attacking him, of course. I can do that. Pumping it with the Pendlehaven, at least dealing three damage. Remember, he doesn't get any damage from the Surrender Perfeet because of the Spirit Link. Well, technically he does. Um, for the people that are wondering about how that works, uh, it's not Life Link. It's more... Uh, you take a damage and then you gain a life. Now, this is very interesting. He's playing three Spirit Links on his Surrender Perfeet, and that means he's taking nine life. And we were actually discussing, we were not sure how this works. Is this an effect that you can simply stack up? So can you see, see uh, say if I play another Spirit Link, I don't get uh, three life, but I get six life because I'm dealing three damage and each Spirit Link will give me three life. Does that work that way? We decided uh, to go for that. This is really nice, by the way, uh, Time Twister. Uh, we decided to go for that rule because we just, you know, we discussed it and said, you know, we're not going to look it up now, but let's assume it's a stackable effect. If you're watching this video and you know the rules behind this, can you please let me know? Are we correct? Is it correct that my opponent, uh, Clannet, is gaining nine life? And every time that he gets one damage from the Surrender of Free, he gets three life because he has three Spirit links, is that correct? Yes or no? So I really would love to hear from you. Let me know uh, what you think. And, and if you know the rules, please let me know if we are playing this correctly. Uh, in the meanwhile, a lot of stuff has happened. There's been that resolved uh, time twister. And of course, we have an evil eye uh, by Orm Score uh, on the board from my site, which is always cool. I mean, for me, this is pretty much a done deal. So I'm just trying to play out some cool cool spells and, and just take it from there. And now he's on so much life. So I was actually saying maybe you can use one dice to represent the tens and one dice to represent the ones. And uh, yeah, I remember this. It was quite some uh, some calculating going on here. He's on, he's on, you're on a ton of life. It doesn't matter. Anyway. Yeah, so the way you can read this now is that he's on 35. Yes, so I, yeah, I remember I said, why not just use one dice for the 10? So the, 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 the dice that says three is represents 30 and the five stands for the one, so that's uh, five life. So he's on 35 life. Doesn't really matter because, I mean, there, there's no way I can get back from this. I mean, of course, a terror on his Surrender Perfeet would help, but instead I'm just playing an Ice Storm, which is pretty meaningless. And I'm tapping it another way, so maybe I have something left. Attacking here for three, so that means he's going to 32. And I'm playing something, playing a crumble on, yeah, on the Mox Sapphire. Well, the thing is, he's already played his blue power. He also has, of course, that um, uh, Birds of Paradise, so. And he's gaining tons of life again. So he's going to 34 here. Looking at his top three cards. And picking one. Playing a Tundra. And I'm, I mean, I'm on nine, so he'll, he, he needs three more turns. Paying four. Okay, well, a, a different plan. He needs less turns. I'm going to six. And he's going to a lot of life. So he's going to 42 now. Okay, I guess he was on 34, then he's going to 43. He gains nine life. Let's see, playing a Swamp here. I might as well attack. I mean, I can just jump block with an Elves. Then again, then again, I mean, attacking doesn't really make any sense. So I guess this is the right decision to make. Doesn't really matter that much anymore. For some reason, he's not putting it on 45. I think he should go to 46 if he was on 43, but okay. At this point in the game, it doesn't matter much. And... He's going to play probably a strip mine over my Pendlehaven. That makes sense. And I'm going to use it one last time to make a creature 2 3, and then I'm going to double block on Evil Eyes and on Elves of the Deep Shadow. Oh, and he's got a Lightning Bolt. 
Ay, 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 ay. That means I'm going to lose my evil eye to make matters even worse. And, um... I mean, I guess, I guess in theory, if I could get a terror and I could play a terror on a surrender, then I would be kind of back in the game. Look at that double. Oh, but there's no. <laughs> I remember this. My my uh, client was saying, "Are you gonna pl play a drain life? Are you gonna do a big drain life?" I'm like, "No, no, don't worry, man. <clears throat> I, I have nothing." So this was game one. Wow, pretty overwhelming. I never stood a chance in this game one. Uh, I don't think we did any sideboarding. We just continued straight on to. Uh, to game to game number two. So um, let's let's go to game two and, and see if I if I uh, can make it into more of a game. Game number two, and uh, at least I'm on the play. Maybe if I can find Elves of Deep Shadow or Dark Ritual Hippie. I don't know. I need I need a strong opening here. Let's see what I can do. Basic Forest. Okay, that's it. That's 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 not great. Oh, look at that. Library of Alexandria. Again, a really cool altar. And there is a quick crumble on his mock sapphire there. And playing a strip mine. Okay, at least I'm finding a strip mine to take care of the Loa. I mean, that, that's pretty lucky. That's really nice. You don't want this to turn into a Loa game. After the first game, I get completely slaughtered by the, the power cards. Hopefully I can make it into a real game this time. And there's a Birds of Paradise. And let's see what I can do. Just playing a Swamp here. And okay, playing a Demonic Tutor, interesting. What am I going to find here? Probably knowing me, I'm not gonna go for a Mind Twist. I'm probably gonna find a Silver Library. Or maybe land removal. And there is the Death Star. So that's one of those beautiful City of Brass Star Wars altars. And he's got three mana now. So again, there's a chance to find uh, that he's going to play out of Surrender Perfreed. Maybe I've looked up my Dust to Dust, expecting him to play a Surrender Perfreed. And I'm not sure. I think he's playing two lands now. Oh, wait a minute. I think that's, um, yeah, this is actually a Black Lotus altar. Look, he's showing it right now. <laughs> so I was like, hey, are you playing two lands? No, it's, it's a Black Lotus. And let's see, am I going to play out my Dust to Dust? Or I should say my Ashes to Ashes. Sorry, I keep mixing those two up, but Ashes to Ashes is in this deck. So it's a card for two black and one. And it can remove two creatures from the game. Um but it does deal five damage to me. But instead I'm playing a Hypnotic Spectre here. And he's taking damage from his two City of Brasses and he's playing a Sylvan Library. So that's a He-Man Sylvan Library. Sometimes it's hard to kind of see what the cards are. And there it is. Ashes to Ashes. Oh, this is so sweet. I really like that card. Um, it's signed by the way by the artist Drew Tucker. Uh, I got this when I was playing at the Fish Liver uh, Oil Cup in Genoa in Italy and uh, there was this player, I believe his name is James, so James if you're watching this uh, leave a comment, thank you very much, he said you know what I'm just going to give this to you, so I'm very thankful for that and I'm, I really enjoy playing this card. And I think that's kind of the old school spirit, sometimes people will just give each other cards. Uh, attacking here and that means um, my opponent has to discard it looks like he's got no cards in hand but of course he does have that Sylvan library um, he's deciding not to draw extra it seems and he's playing a falling star that's pretty cool so he's going to do a falling star on my hypnotic specter so I'm definitely going to put this in slow-mo and here we go so he's probably going to go for the hypnotic specter of course what else falling star is such a cool card and bam, and it's a hit. So that means three damage to my Hypnotic Spectre and my Hypnotic Spectre dies. So the end of my Hippie, but you know, it's a cool way to end. I'd rather have a Falling Star than uh, a Bolt. So I like it, I like it. Having five mana, playing my Evil Eyes. So that's pretty cool. I can start dealing some damage. I mean, he still has that Sylvan Library, which is a huge disadvantage. And um, when I was playing this game, I realized I have nothing against enchantments. Um, so I should probably add some tranquilities to a possible sideboard here. Taking a damage from the City of Brass, playing a Time Walk. 
Again, it's that blue power. And if he can find an ancestral recall, I mean, that would be really, really good for my opponent here. At least taking some damage. Oh, look at that, a demonic tutor. Ay, 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 ay. Is he going to find a mind twist? Twist me for two. Or is he, I mean, his hand is pretty empty. Okay, <laughs> I like this play. Okay, Clannet, you have my respect. I really like this play. It's really nice. Uh, we were talking about it and we were saying, you know, he was saying, you know what, I just want this to be a fun game. I'm going to play a, a time twister. And I mean, his hand is empty, so it's not like it's a bad play, but he could have also gone for the really nasty play, which would be a mind twist for two, emptying my hand in all fairness. But he said, you know what, my hand's empty, your hand's almost empty. Let's just do a fun play to see some more shenanigans. And he played the uh, time twister. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we're going to shuffle up. And of course, you see those two cards that are not included in the shuffle. Those two cards were hit by the um, Ashes to Ashes. So they're removed from the game. So that's that, uh, that black card that I played. And I'm going to draw seven new ones. And he's going to draw seven new ones. I don't think he's made his land drop yet. So he can do that still. He can play Moxon. He can, you know, he can do... All sorts of shenanigans still. With these power decks, you never know. So let's see what he's going to do. He's got a new hand. I have a new hand. And I mean, he's. I've, we have the same amount of mana available. Both we have five five mana. I've got five land. He's got three land and soul ring. Uh, I have an evil eye and he's a sylvan. And we have the same amount of cards in hand. So it, it's pretty even. I actually would rather have a sylvan library than an evil eye, I think. And he's playing the tundra. And I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. So that's pretty, pretty, pretty nice. I'm attacking and putting him on 11. I can see possibilities in this game. Maybe I can start getting rid of some lands. It looks like I'm planning a dark ritual. I'm first playing a crumble on his soul ring. Then I'm playing a dark ritual. Okay, and that means I can probably be, play two land removal spells this turn. First one is going to be a sinkhole. In response, there's that Ancestral Recall. And I'm playing a Regrowth. Oh, I'm playing a Regrowth over my Sinkhole, playing the Sinkhole. And I'm probably going to go for Staiga? Because I want him to hurt himself? No, I'm not doing that. Okay, because I'm trying to block out a color, I guess. Maybe I should have gone for the Taiga, because he's on 11 already. And he does have a Sylvan in play. And the, the thing with the Sylvan is... It's a really good card, um, but if you want to draw an extra card, it's going to cost you four life. So if I can get him low enough where he doesn't want to activate his Sylvan anymore, at least that's a threat off the table. And I've noticed playing against these City of Brasses a lot that you can actually use the City of Brasses for your opponent to start uh, hurting himself. And and hopefully this this trick of uh, uh, of me to get rid of of a lot of his mana, uh, hopefully that will help to um, uh, to set him back a little bit. It doesn't look like it though, because he's playing a Spirit Link on my evil eye. And I'm now I'm a bit like, because, ah, playing a Hypnotic Spectre, but remember I cannot attack with Hypnotic Spectre because I have that evil eye on the battlefield, because evil eye says the only creatures that can attack are evil eyes. So I have a worthless evil eye with the spirit link and I have no way to get rid of enchantments. So <laughs> it's just like a horrible situation for me to be in. At least I can still block with my evil eye. I'm now putting a counter on to kind of indicate that, that there's a spirit link on the evil eye. Um, yeah, so this is far from ideal for me. And I'm looking at my opponent who's already on nine, which is, which is pretty good, right? But uh, if I can't really get advantage out of that, so... What can I do? Am I gonna tap three here? Okay, I'm not. I think I'm a little bit in the tank here, trying to find a way to get rid of that spirit link. Because this is the big problem with evil eye. If you have an evil eye on the field, you can only attack with evil eye. So my hypnotic specter is now completely worthless as, as an attacker at least, and all my other creatures are. Look at this playing in uh, ashes to Ashes, and I remember this, I was getting rid of my own evil eye, and I was getting rid of his Surrender Perfrit, and I did that because now I can attack and he also loses a card. So I'm going really for the aggressive 
Tactic here is losing a disenchant, which is not, you know, it's not a very valuable card against me. I'm playing with three Sylvans, but I haven't seen my Sylvans, by the way. So that means that my opponent is now going uh, on to seven. And it looks like I want to do something else. Am I gonna maybe play out an elf? Uh, I guess I decide not to do anything. Uh, maybe I don't want to crumble his Mox Ruby because um, I want to have a weapon against a possible Mishra's Factory. Tapping three. Oh, I like this. This is cool. Oh, that's exactly what I want. So playing a crumble here. And oh man, really. It's so nice to play against uh, players that enjoy the game. So really cool. Thank you, man. Playing a Wheel of Fortune. Again, we're going to draw a fresh seven. I like this. And uh, let's see. I wonder what I'm gonna do if I find a mind twist in this in, in my in my in my hand. If I'm gonna play it out. I mean that is the right thing to do, but do you wanna do that? Anyway, we both have a fresh seven uh, in our hands now. And I think yeah, he's playing a mox jet, and I, I mean he can still attack with his Kurt Ape, right? Yeah, that's what he's gonna do. So he's gonna bring me down to four. No, I found found a terror finally. I knew they're in the deck. I just we just didn't see them yet. So there's one at least playing with two main, killing the Kurt ape. So again, I'm in a pretty good position here. I can attack, bringing him to five, or he's going to jump with the bird. It's probably good to first attack, and maybe after that, see if I can attack his land base again. So I'm going to attack here with the hypnotic specter. Ooh, there's a tap. And there is a lightning bolt. So that is the end. Not a nice falling star this time. Just a regular lightning bolt taking care of the Hypnotic Spectre. Playing a Mishra's Factory passing turn here. So no land removal from me. Which is kind of exceptional since I'm playing eight land removal spells main. Well, actually nine because strip mine is land removal as well, of course. And there is a Mishra's Factory by my opponent. Tapping for four here. Ay, ay, ay. Earn him gin. Will I be able to bounce back from this, or am I simply going to lose this one? At least finding another uh, Mishra's Factory. Tapping five here, finding Evil Eye, and that's a great blocker, actually, for that Urnum Jin. So this is great. Evil Eye, of course, being a 3-6. And let's see, tapping for another Urnum Jin. Wow. Wow, this is going to be super difficult. I can attack and bring him to four. Uh, that's what I'm going to do, I guess. The problem is he's on, on four. That means I need two more turns. And I don't think I have two more turns. I'm actually passing. What is my plan? Am I going to just chum block with my factories here? Wow, or do I have another Terror on hand? I'm just going to play that Terror. That, that, that could be an option. Then again, that would be very risky because if he has a counter spell, but you got to play towards your outs, right? I'm looking at my hand. And this is going to be a Terror, I think. Tapping two here. No, I'm going to double block one. Gonna kill it. That means I'm gonna go to two life. Ooh, if he has a lightning bolt, I'm dead. And now I can I can go bring him to one. I can chump block and I can use my strip for his factory. Okay, I have to keep my fingers crossed here. Because my opponent has so many outs at the moment. I mean, and he has a Sylvan as well. What he needs is a lightning bolt. What he needs is a card to get rid of my evil eye or a card to get rid of my factory or you know he can even just play no you cannot play another creature that's not going to help so i have to chump it here it looks like my opponent is not able to play out anything am i going to win this second game and he's showing me at a counter spell but it's too little too late so wow okay that is a close call but what a cool matchup and uh clanet Really appreciate it, man. Going for the Time Twister, going for the Wheel of Fortune. That's what makes Magic great. Uh, thank you for doing that. A beautiful deck. But that means it's a 1-1. So we're going to game number three. Game number three.
three and it's a one one and that's more than i actually expected after that first game uh so good game game number three we can both win this one and uh, it's my opponent from la clanet on the play here look at that really cool chaos orb altar there and uh let's take a look what can i find let me know what you think about my opponent's deck, by the way. What, do you, what is your opinion about altars? Uh, I really like them. I think they're really uh, part of old school. Um, you know, but people have different opinions, which is, of course, absolutely fine. I think that's so nice about magic that, you know, we all have our preferences and that you can, you can kind of cu customize your deck in a way that you enjoy it. And there's a swamp into a dark ritual, into a sinkhole. And there's another, will there be, ah, there's a Sylvan. This is actually a pretty good play for me. Being able to use all the mana from the Dark Ritual. And there's, of course, a quick flip. Let's put that in slow-mo. The first orb flip of this matchup. And let's see if he can get a hit. And you know what? I'm, I was just playing the Sylvan thing. Okay, I'm just going to give you a target. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to... Let you take me hostage with your orb. Ooh, and that bounced off. I, it hit the card, but it bounced off. So I'm really, really, really lucky. Um, and this can be huge because he missed a land drop in turn two. Um, so this can be huge. This gives me a huge advantage here. And you can see he's now thinking what to do. Of course, he did it in my end step. And I'm very, very lucky here. And if I can find some more land removal, and remember, I'm playing with four crumble, four sinkholes, four ice storms. I mean, this is not a picnic deck. I can, I can start attacking his his land base. Looking at the cards now, and uh, probably gonna try to find a crumble here to take care of the Mox Pearl. If I can find it, I'm gonna take a huge advantage here. Um, Hypnotic Spectre, not too bad either, because I can start attacking his hand size. Playing a Taiga here. He's got two land. Does he have a Falling Star or a Lightning Bolt? Okay, we see there. Boom, there's a Lightning Bolt. Again, an altered version. Of course, like almost the entire deck. And that's actually pretty good. So that means the Hippie's gone. But I'm finding a... Oh, Sinkhole and a Crumble. Ay, 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 this is painful for my opponent. I mean, it's nice for me. This is where I want to be. Uh, there is a volcanic island, so at least he's drawing some land now. Can he find an ancestral recall? No, he cannot. He's playing a Kurt Ape. Remember, it's still a 1 1 because there's no forest on his side uh, of the board. So we've got that beautiful Kurt Ape and an Ice Storm. I, I, can't, I feel bad. I'm sorry. It's what my deck wants to do and then play out Evil Eyes. So I'm going to go to 19 because of the Kurt Ave. And remember, this is a Black Lotus. He's going to crack the Lotus. Okay, I don't feel bad anymore. Look at those cards that he's using. Ah, uh, ho, ho. Surrender a free 3-4 flyer on the battlefield. I need that um, that Ashes to Ashes right now. Instead, I'm playing a Forest. I have enough mana to play an Evil Eye, which at least will enable me to block the Kurt Ave. I mean, despite the fact that he has no lands in play, he's got two creatures, one of them being the 3-4 flyer, which is quite strong. I'm playing, interesting here, playing a um, regrowth on my Hypnotic Spectre. So I'm probably going to take the damage here and I'm going to force him to start discarding some cards. But he's also played at Mishra's Factory, so if he can find another land source... Playing another Hippie, that means I can double block next turn. So I'm deciding to keep my Hypnotic Spectre untapped here. So I can do the double block. If he can find a forest now, he can start swinging in. I'm lucky here that he's not finding another land. And I'm double blocking, losing a Hippie, taking a damage from the Ape. And I believe I only have one card in hand. 
And okay, pretty lucky find that Sylvan because that is one of the cards that he can almost play out and that will definitely get him out of the situation that he's in. Remember, he's still on 16. So despite the fact he's hardly had any lands to deal with, he's been able to put me on 10 and he's on, on 16 himself. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, playing a Swamp here, attacking. And the nice, the good thing here about uh, what my opponent is doing, he's putting enough pressure on me so that I cannot really use the Sylvan the way I want to. I cannot use it aggressively. I don't want to pay to four life. So that is that is difficult. And playing a Bayou. And I wonder what that last card in my hand is. I'm actually going to play it out, playing an Ice Storm over his factory. And he's going to lose his Spirit Link. And I'm going to pass turn. Probably the Ice Storm was the card that I picked up from the Sylvan because what I do, and I don't really know what your opinion about this is, but sometimes I just leave a land in my hand if I just have just one card in my hand to kind of at least create the idea that I have something. Playing an Elves of Deep Shadow, which is actually pretty useful right now because it can stop that Curd Ape. So he's probably not going to attack anymore with the Curd Ape. So it's going to save me some damage. He is actually going to attack, so, oh, I'm not trading. I'm going to go to 7 myself, choosing to deal 3 damage next turn. Oh, I'm actually deciding to, to jump. I've changed my mind. Okay, maybe it would have been better to just... No, I think a jump is good, because if he finds a forest, I mean, that Curd Ape turns into a 2-3, and it actually turns into a problem then. So I think this is a good decision to trade. Let me know what you would have done. Um, and this is a bit, you know, he's got no permanence. I mean, and he's already used his um, his Black Lotus as well. Finding a Loa here, yeah, of course, very, very useless at this point. And that's on the back of a Markpool Island. Beautiful altar, I really like it. Made by the artist and made by Markpool himself. Uh, two cards in hand. And... Yeah, just swinging in, it's gonna go to four. And that, that I mean, will I actually win this one? Because if you remember seeing game one, I was just blown away. Oh, look at that, that's Ancestral Recall. That's one of those cards that could have saved him. And I'm gonna look at my first three. And swinging in again, he's gonna go to two, he's gonna lose another card. That's another piece of blue power there. And okay, okay, he's found a ruby. Will there be a lightning bolt? Oh no, there won't be a lightning bolt. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, I was, I remember this. I was telling him when I play with Sylvan, I usually keep my other Sylvan on top. So when my opponent disenchants it, I immediately draw into a new one. Wow. I really didn't expect to win this matchup, to be honest, especially after that first game. Um, but this was, it was so fun to play. Um, I, I feel kind of like the evil, evil deck here, you know, because I'm just, I'm just killing all his lands and all his mana sources. But um, it was a lot of fun uh, to play against Clanet. Clanet, thank you for the match. I hope I pronounced your name correct, by the way. Let me know if I don't. Um, if you like what you've seen here, if you like this beautiful altar deck, uh, what you can do is you can follow him on Instagram. So the address is um, showing right now. Um, I believe it's alpha underscore lotus. Um, so you can check it out on Instagram. He's got a really nice, nice feed. It's really interesting. Um, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. If you want to support the channel, like always, you can do so by leaving a like, leaving a comment, subscribe, subscribe to the channel, um, share it on your socials, of course. Uh, what else? We also have a Patreon page, which you're probably aware of by now. Uh, you can join uh, my Patreon program, become a patron of Timmy Talks and support the show financially as well and talking about the supporters of the show let's go to the end scroll and let's check out the patrons of timmy talks
Ziggetus, Ziggetus, Somba, Kazee. 